And this is where the story starts. The story of one of the greatest whistleblower stories in American history. It starts here. Hello folks, welcome to a new episode of the vlog with Tanya Swader. Um, so you guys know every spring we have to check in with Tanya Swader and see how the garden is growing because that's like a thing. So, and as far as I've been seeing on Facebook, it seems to be going well. Am I right, Tanya Swader? That's right, going pretty good. In spite of all the heat, folks, this heat is no joke. Here's the garden. I love these. Those are super. Bubblegum petunias. They look very bubblegum. And they just grow and grow and grow and grow all the time. And what do you have here, Tanya Swader? I think that's kale. Kale. That we don't eat. That oh. you can't eat. We just don't eat it. It's for decoration. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes So are these still your tomatoes? Yes. As per usual. I haven't had a chance to water today. Yeah. Oh, look. Tomatoes. All of them turning red. So that's what I'm saying. The leaves are a little yellow because we've had a lot of rain and I've been getting rid of them. But as far as the tomatoes, they're just producing tomatoes. American flag, we like that. Lots of black eyed Susans. These are some wild some flowers, oh. some zinnias. Oh, zinnias. Those are down there. I don't know what these were. Cleaning out these leaves. I've done it twice and then I come back and they're twice as big again. But this is zucchini and squash. Oh, zucchini. See, you know, the first year, Tanya, that you did this, you only got like one zucchini and then you planted again last year. And so now and you got them this year. And this year, I'm not getting as many. Oh. I think it's the rain. But I got to get in there and trim some of these leaves back. We've got zinnias in here. Is that dill? No, I think that's a wildflower, mm. but I don't know which kind yet. And we've got cucumbers back there. This is basil. But this year I was gone out of town twice in the spring, so I, there's some things that I just don't, did not get planted that I wanted, but it's all right in here. See? Where are we going? What is this now? I think it's like burgundy beans. Burgundy beans. I planted these beans because the seeds got wet and I felt like I better plant them or they're going to go bad. So I planted all of them in that thing and next thing I know I got a ton of okra. This one, that one, that one, and that one I'll have okra. I don't know if there's anything on it yet, but I've never done eggplant. Oh, an eggplant. Yeah, I have three. Yeah. There's a, looks like big old bell peppers maybe. Uh -huh. Gosh, I gotta get some water on these things. You can't just, you can't beat the hundred. Here in Oklahoma, it gets a hundred degrees in the afternoon and it's a, just a fight to try to keep them with water. I understand. These are the, they're the, I love those. They're just cute. Some of these are just wild seeds, wildflowers. You know what I'll do with these? I'll take them up here and let these seeds dry and then you have Oh, are these Indian blankets? They are. That is the state flower of Oklahoma. They are, and I have a ton. You have a ton. Oh, look at that. Wow. I guess banana pepper burger rippers. More than likely. I'll really plant those. To keep. Yeah. By the way, if you... steak ones, you know what? I think that's what they call them, where they go like on hamburgers and stuff. I mean, oh, that's okay. huge. Wow, it's such a pretty color. So, if he's not red now, he'll be red by tomorrow. 
up and not let the birds get them. Are these sun are these sun um sunflowers? TK? Yes. And <laughs> I had two sunflowers in here last year and they produced a ton of flowers and these are all just came back up from the seed. Well folks, that is wrapping up Tanya Swader's garden. We're gonna gather some vegetables and be on. Make sure you like, subscribe if you haven't already, and then leave a comment about your favorite garden vegetable. Uh, or if you have tips on what Tanya Swader should grow next year, leave that in the comments as well. Hello folks. Today's gonna be an adventure. We're gonna go to Crescent, Oklahoma and we will pick it up from there. I'm currently in Goldsby. So I came up here for my call time. They didn't get it to me early yesterday. And of course, you know, I'm two hours away. So I was like, well, out of the abundance of caution, I'm gonna show up anyway, just in case I have a seven o'clock AM call time. I get here just in time to get an email that says teachers, which I'm a background teacher in this case, background teachers, um, you are not called to borrow which this was the original call time, but I mean, I mean, any set goes, you know, I mean, anybody says this is actually a TV pilot. So they postponed it till tomorrow, potentially. Uh, but again, minute by minute basis. So I just hope I can be used this week because I was, I was on set for a long time last week and wasn't even able to be used. So, but that's the life of being an actor. Anyway, this is going to be an adventure that we'll just see how this goes. So yeah, here we go. And this is where the story starts. The story of one of the greatest whistleblower stories in American history. It starts here. This is the story of Karen Silkwood. Karen Silkwood was recently separated from her husband and she left her home of Texas to come to Oklahoma City, where she got a job here at the Kerr-McGee plant, where they were working with uranium and plutonium and other things relevant to nuclear power and nuclear energy. Well, she shortly figured out very quickly that there was a lot of risks here with the employees and she became the union leader and she would later go to Washington DC with the union and she actually went to the union and said hey these things are going on and the union said well go investigate them well she eventually gathered her paperwork and that's where we go to the next part of our story this story was dramatized in the early 1980s in a film directed by Mike Nichols starring Meryl Streep as Karen Silkwood and Cher and Kurt Russell. So you should definitely go watch that. So Karen Silkwood gathered all the necessary information. In fact, during this, because Kerr McGee was well aware of her activities and what she was doing. She actually was found to be contaminated with like 40 times the lethal dose of plutonium or uranium, one of the two of them. And it was kind of unusual circumstances. There was also found to be uranium, plutonium in a, on her sandwich meat in her refrigerator. And it was just really strange. Now that being said, there were a lot of allegations toward her that she was trying to do this all to herself. But her friends were saying, listen, she was really, really scared and really, really bothered. So that's hardly the case of someone that would intentionally poison themselves, which the smallest amount of that could have landed her with cancer. So a uh, lot, of, lot of details, a lot of interesting information. But the next stop in our story is just up the street. And this is where the story escalates. This is the cafe, was the cafe, where Karen Silkwood had the union meeting where she was witness to have the documents. And then that's where she left to go to Oklahoma City to meet with a New York Times reporter to blow the top off the whole situation. Now, this is where the actual events happened, but if you want to see what the movie location looks like, you can see that here. So I'm currently in Howe, Texas, and this is what the cafe looked like in the film. And this is where our story unfortunately ends, in a culvert on the side of the road on the way to Oklahoma City. Karen Silkwood's vehicle was found in the culvert under suspicious circumstances. Not only were there skid marks on the road, but there was a bump in the brand new vehicle she had just purchased. And the files that she held that she had left the cafe with were never found again. It is heavily suspected that Kerr McGee had done that to shut her down and to shut her up. And unfortunately, this is where the story ends, in the culvert, in the side of the road. This is a wild story, a whistleblower story, 
and I definitely recommend that you go find the film, which is fantastic. The plant was later shut down a year later after the government was aware that there were 20 pounds of plutonium missing from the plant and there were accountability issues that were not good. And I mean, it was just a big mess. I'm gonna put a link in the bio to a story I literally read yesterday from Rolling Stone magazine published in the 70s about this whole situation. And you guys should go back and read it. It's very thorough, a very compelling story about the aftermath. So one location that I don't have information on because it probably was somewhere in Oklahoma City because I think that's where she actually lived. But the house used in the film, that I can show you. And you can see that here. So out of respect for the current occupants slash owners who may or may not at this point know that a very notable film was shot there, um, I'm not gonna give you the address, but I will tell you that this house is located near Tom Bean, Texas, not too far from Howe. So, it's also worth noting that there is one more notable resident from Crescent, and that would be Bradley Manning, who would later be called Chelsea Manning, for leaking documents to WikiLeaks. And so it's very interesting that this small town is very known for whistleblowers. And so I just like to encourage anyone watching this that in a day and age like this where there's so much corruption and so much evil, that if you see something, say something, because it could mean a world of difference to the world.